<laughs> it's so good waiting to get in the pool. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's uh, getting late. Just got a plant in the mail, though, and you know when they show up, you got to get them opened up. I already popped it out of the box. There's not much of a surprise here because the pool said what it is in the thumbnail, right? Probably. I just, I need my blade. So there we go. Get the plastic cut off the side of the container. I popped it open, unwrap it, give it a drink, all that fun stuff. See reason to film the process of unboxing it because well, I just, I didn't have time. But it's a cool plant. And when I thought that would be fun to show on the channel, is this a bad place to put the camera? Yep, yep, yep that's not gonna work. Inflatable <laughs> ottoman, not sturdy enough, no surprise there. So this is Leucocasia gigantea aria. That's what the listing said. It's a variegated Thai giant elephant ear. Not a very common plant. I saw this on Etsy when I was looking for something else completely different. And uh, I just, I had to get it because the price was, for what it is, really good. Variegated plants get marked up really high sometimes, but this, I think it was $60, maybe 70. That's not bad. Another reason that I wanted to, can I have some space bud? Just a little bit, right in my ear, it's 92 degrees. Why don't you go swim? Go get in the pool, go swim. Yeah, go swim, you can do it, You're, you can do it, you're free. Okay, there we go. Labrador breath right in my face so it's 92 degrees outside. Cellar was fantastic. We didn't have a lot of direct communication, but they reached out to me to let me know that there's going to be a shipping delay because had some other stuff going on by one day. Just a delay by one day, and I was like, okay, cool. I didn't even know you were going to ship it out this week because I've gotten so used to ordering plants and then sellers on Etsy waiting two to three weeks to send them, but they'll do the thing right after you place the order where it says a label's been created. So like, you think your plant's on the way, but it's not. It was really nice they reached out and said that. And then they sent me a picture of them holding a plant that was freshly dug. And I thought, well, that's weird because when I bought this, there was an option for plant A or plant B and they were both potted plants. And I didn't say anything to them. I was just like, okay, it looks great. Wow. Thinking, oh no, it's July and they're going to send me a freshly dug plant from the ground. A plant that tends to be pretty picky about having the roots messed with. They don't like having their roots torn up and everything, especially when it's really hot outside. But I figured I'd just wait and see what happened. And only two days later, the plant showed up looking great. It's in a container. So it is the plant that I picked out. And it turned out the thing that she had showed me in the picture, which she <laughs> tied very nicely to the stake that was in this pot. It was in there to hold it in place in the box. This is the piece that she dug out. So she sent me a bonus. That's really nice. Very appreciated. They didn't have to do that. I didn't even care that it was going to be another day till shipping. So like I said, I just assumed it was probably going to be a week or two until they shipped out. Here we are. I need to get this unwrapped. You can have a kind of a closer look at it. I mean, you're basically seeing it right now. I mostly just am excited about the plant. I don't have a ton to say about it other than it's really pretty. Okay, I know this is very unprofessional, but I'm using my legs as a tripod right now. I'm sitting with my legs all pretzled up. <laughs> the camera might move around a little bit. Packaging was really nice. That was strapped in. They actually did something I hadn't seen or I don't recall seeing before where they popped holes in the sides of the box and wrapped sh string or twine something kind of, kind of material to hold it back inside the container through the box and put tape over that. And I thought, well, that was kind of cool. It's a neat way to secure a plant. Of course, there's plenty of plastic wrap here. I probably need to change the blade on that box cutter. I don't, you know, it didn't do much. And it had the bamboo pole in there for stability. And the bamboo pole had another plant wrapped in it. Oh, I certainly can't complain. It's already more than I asked for just by sending me the bonus plant. It was very nice of them. It looks like there's a tag in here. I don't think I need that. I know what a leucocasia is. Is it, am I going to forget that they're calling it Aria? Maybe. I don't really care about that. I'm not into this because I want some kind of rare plants. I just really like the idea of having a plant that has these giant leaves that are going to be variegated. Got the newspaper on top of the soil, plastic bag secured around the entire thing, and then plastic wrap around it in addition. Addition to the plastic bags. Yeah, this is a well-packaged plant. Very well. I really appreciate that with plants like, oh, and there's more, there's more. There's a newspaper down here too. Have an overachiever packaging up these plants. I'm not going to be mad about that. What I was saying is that I really appreciate the extra effort being put towards packaging in general, but especially with an elephant ear, leucocasia, colocasia, alocasia, and bananas as well. They don't ship very well. I usually get an elephant ear in the mail and they look pretty crummy. And yeah, it's got some sadness on it but it was just in a box and there's a heat spell today was the first day of it so i don't actually think that this had to endure 
any of that heat, but well, actually it digs. I'm pretty sure this shipped up from, it was either Florida or Louisiana. I had a few different plants come in this week. I'm pretty sure Florida. So had to deal with some extreme temperatures. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this leaf on there because the stem's nice and green so that energy can go back down into the plant. And these are just droopy. Soil is moist. Like I said, I cheated before I picked up the camera and let some water get down in there. Okay, and I'm curious to see what's going on with this. I'm gonna put you guys back in my lap. There we go. I'm very surprised that that's working out as well as it is and that I've never done it before. Like 900 videos into the channel and that's never even occurred to me before. And get this unwrapped. I can see there's more plastic on the inside of this. Everything is packaged so, so, so well. Hey, that's a nice size chunk of plant. That looks like that might even be multiple chunks of plant. It says right there, free thank you, variegated Leucocasia gigantea aria. That's fantastic, so great. An unexpected bonus that was completely unnecessary and very much appreciated. This is one of the other reasons I decided to film the video because when I thought there was an extra plant, I was like, well, that's kind of going above and beyond. Might be nice for them to get some love and attention for doing that just because the bar is so low. I've had so many bad experiences with plants on Etsy over the last mainly year when it's when it seemed to be the worst, but this is just great. My past few orders have been so good. This is a very strong plant. Look at that, there's already, oh, can we maybe see that? Maybe, probably not. It's not going to want to focus from that close. But there's a piece of root that looks like it's already pushing through the paper that's wrapped around here. Paper's still damp, that's great. And yeah, this is two plants. Got two offshoots here that the seller dug up and sent to me. So 69 bucks, I got three of them. Not saying that's going to be the case for you, they don't know about the YouTube channel. They didn't know that I would be doing this or any of those things. Their Etsy shop will be linked down below. Had a pretty good selection of plants. Uh, a lot of them were pretty pricey, which is another reason that I ordered these because I thought, well, that's, that's such a good deal compared to the cost on some of the other plants. 69 bucks for a variegated plant that's going to have massive gigantic leaves. Leucocasia gigantea, the Thai giant elephant ear. When you order these online, you need to do it with caution because oftentimes the uh, pictures will show uh, a few of the giant Leucocasia tide giants. And then if you keep scrolling and you pay attention in other pictures, there will be other giant looking elephant ears, but the leaf's kind of different. They're usually hanging down more. They're not as upright, which is what you have with the Leucocasia. Those are the Jax giant elephant ears, which is just an Esculenta. It's a regular very large but regular colocasia like the most run-of-the-mill large colocasia much easier to sell because you can ship them out by bulb the tide giants leucocasias they take a few years to form a nice big tuber that you can grow out and make dormant so when you see a bulb of a tide giant being sold just know that that is probably not actually a tide giant i'm seeing the upright leaves here the veining also is more three-dimensional on each side of the leaf with the leucocasia, so that's a really good way to tell them apart. And the leucocasia is going to have a much larger leaf than the Jack's Giant, so they are both very big, nice plants. These are way cooler. Being variegated, I'm just going to assume that it's probably not going to have quite the same size or vigor as the regular ties, but that's okay, because this is not one that I'm gonna be putting in the ground and treating kind of like an annual, like I do with some of my others. I mulch them and hope that they come back. They never do. I'm in zone 7A. It's just not likely to happen here. 6B, 7A, I should say. Or I dig them up and I bring them inside and I store them. I keep them in kind of like a medium growth, if that makes any sense. So I don't put them in my grow space in a spot where they're going to be underneath grow lights and uh, or I'm gonna be watering them constantly. I keep them more kind of where I keep my bananas that have been cut back and they get splashes water occasionally so they have like one or two leaves at a time. So they're not dormant, but they're not really actively growing either. It's more just kind of like trying to keep them ticking until it's spring and I can move them back outside. Is it raining? It just, there's drops of something. I felt it on my back. Hopefully it didn't bird poop on me. Oh no, that's rain. That's weird. It's sunny. Why does it stop it? Wondering when I placed the order, I was like, is this even a leucocasia? Could this be some sort of alocasia? Only because look at all the offsets in there. Thai giants don't usually have lots and lots of little plants in a small pot. That's usually something you see more with like a macrophylla or one of the other many types of alocasias. Since they sent me that picture of these down here that were freshly dug, I don't have that concern anymore. So I am even more excited because they sent me the two 
free plants in addition to this pot down here, which is full of lots and lots of little baby plants. And even though the leucocases don't offset all that readily, they do, but it's not usually until they're larger that they start to do that. They will do it at a smaller size when you have a cut, like if you pull one of these up like this and you plant it out, if you have a division in the middle of the tuber that's in there, then you will have lots and lots of little baby ones that come up and those actually do take longer to grow out. So when they reach a certain size, it's a good idea to divide them up when you think that they all have viable root systems on them and then you'll start to get more growth out of them. If you leave them in a clump like this for too long, then they end up just kind of staying small for longer. That happens sometimes with um, bulbs. When you buy bulbs of caladiums, uh, particularly like the Hilo Beauty, sometimes the bulb will be pitted. When they're pitted and they're, they have that big indentation in the middle, usually they'll put up lots and lots of babies instead of having a main growth from the middle. So that could be what's going on here. I don't know. Or maybe they just put lots and lots of little divisions in a pot or tried them from seed. Maybe these produce nice variegated plants from seed. That's also extremely possible and more than likely what happened. This feels like it's fairly well established in this container too, which is nice. I'm going to leave it for a couple of weeks in this pot. I'm going to put it someplace where it's going to get bright morning sun and afternoon shade and keep that soil consistently moist in a day or two when things cool off. We're in a pretty hot spell right now. But when we're done with being in the upper 90s, I am going to water it with a root stimulator, a very gentle one, just to make sure that any damage or anything that's gone on down there can repair itself. And these are also going to be watered in with a root stimulator. In fact, I should probably pop these up. I shouldn't just be sitting out here with these on the ground right now. Uh, I have two pots here because I was going to pop them both up, but I'm having second thoughts. One of them I may go ahead and put in the ground. It seems worthwhile right to go ahead and just pop one in the ground and see what it does. I'm thinking the one that has the, I don't know if I'd call that a weaker root system or not. These are actually probably both about the same. This one right here is going to outgrow one of these pots rather quickly, which is good, right? Don't want to pot it up into something too large because then all the moisture that's in the soil is just going to wick right away from the root ball. It's not going to make it easy to get it established. Whereas this one, I'll have some more time to keep it in this pot. So this will be the one that I go ahead and I keep in a container. And that other one, I will go ahead and pop it in the ground someplace. Oh, got a root sticking up. Might need to add some more soil into there. This is an all-purpose blend that I have added compost to and a amendment that I believe is called Farmer's Market made by Mother's Earth. It has bat guano and sea kelp and all kinds of good stuff in it. And uh, there's ocean forest in there too. So kind of got a whole bunch of stuff going on. And their main thing is that it drains really well, has some organics. And with this other one, I was thinking maybe put it right here. Does that be okay? I think that that would be all right. It would look really pretty. Those variegated heart-shaped leaves right here at the corner. Typically I would say no, because it's a tie. It's going to fill in this entire space, but it's mid-July. So uh, by the time it's that big, it'll be time to go ahead and lift it out anyways. I have to pull anything that's in the ground out of here every single year because I have a palm tree that's in the back that, that, uh, that can't stay out here, right? It would die in the winter time. So only annuals and things that need to be lifted and pulled can go in this particular spot. I think this, this might be good. I don't think there's quite enough room, but I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> come back in a couple months, September garden tour. I'm gonna to be coming over here saying, why'd you guys let me plant this here? It's too big. All right, that probably was not worthy to film because it's just a stick, but you get the point. Hopefully sometime in the next few weeks, this will start putting up some nice, big, heart-shaped, variegated leaves. And well, if it had more growing time, it would be way too big for this spot, but I don't think that's going to be the case. And again, it's variegated. So uh, stop myself. Let's go look at the one that actually has leaves on it while I finish talking about it. That would make the most sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Don't know what the vigor is going to be like because it's a variegated variety. Typically, Leucocasia gigantea is a plant that used to be one that was described as having hybrid vigor. The hybridization of it part, not really something that has a lot behind it anymore. That was when they were pretty new and people were thinking that they were a hybrid, whereas now they've been separated out into their own class, which is Leucocasia, which would mean not a hybrid, right? It's its own thing. It's its own plant. But the growth rate is still something you would see with a plant with hybrid vigor. 
Very nice, big plants. Cannot wait. I'm so excited to see some growth on these. Just imagining great big, you know, four foot by six foot, huge leaves that have these patches on them. I have a feeling it may end up being tricky finding the right light for it because it's variegated, but uh, we'll get there. And it's in a pot, so that makes it a lot easier. I'll be bumping it up into a 10 inch pot in just a couple of weeks. But for right now, I want to leave it alone keep it well watered and just give it some TLC, let it recover. All right, thanks for hanging out. If you grown variegated Leucocasia before, let us know. I'll have that Etsy seller linked down in the description below. And just say hi, I love talking to everybody. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. These are pretty simple plants. Don't let them dry out. Water and dry your climate, then avoid afternoon sun. Otherwise, stick them in the ground, keep them well hydrated fertilize on a regular basis because they love their nutrient and they will just grow grow and grow and grow okay as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye